Hey there, Lindy of Celebrant Train in Scotland. It's March 2023. We have just completed a four day funeral celebrant training course here in Perth in Scotland. And I thought it might be helpful for you folks out there who are considering training to be a funeral celebrant about what you should really be thinking about beforehand. And so I know there's lots of videos out there from different organisations saying things like, oh, this is what you need. You need empathy and you need good listening skills and good interpersonal skills. And, and that is all very, very important. But there are a range of other things that you should be thinking about because while this work is really rewarding, it's, it's so so great and it's such an honour to be doing this work and to be out there working with families and uh, helping people who are grieving to say goodbye to their, their loved ones in the best way possible. But it does not come without challenges. There are so many different moving parts to this work and I think it's really important that you know that before you sign up, pay any money to, to come along and do it. I think every single one of the six students who have just graduated will tell you that there was so much more work involved than, than what they thought. And this work is so nuanced that we can't possibly teach you everything that is to know. A lot of it you will, you will come to learn and uh, develop the skills in those areas as you go out doing this work. But here's the thing, here's how this, this role works in March 2023 here in Scotland. It might be different in other places, but after you have completed your training, you will, using the advice and the resources that you have created as part of the training, you will go out and engage with funeral directors in your local area. Now, depending on where you stay, that might be a couple of funeral directors or there might be loads of funeral directors, but you're going to go out and engage with those. And as part of the course, we talk through what happens there. But once you've done that, then there's every possibility because funeral directors are, by and large, very professional, but warm and friendly people, and they like to give new celebrants a chance because they know how beneficial it is for them if they have a really good celebrant working with their families and delivering really good ceremonies. So you may well get a phone call from a funeral director saying, we have a funeral service on this day, at this time, at this place, can you help us? And you will say, yes, I can, hopefully. And the, the funeral director will then give you all the details that you need to have about the service and about the family and the next of kin and who you have to get in contact with. You will then pick up the phone very quickly and you will make contact with the family member whose details you've been given. And the purpose of that call is for you to arrange a gathering meeting with you and the family. Now, by and large, here in Scotland, that's done face to face. We as ceremonialists go to a family's home and we sit with them and we ask questions and we try and get as much rich information as we can. And then we put that together with the family's wishes, what they are asking of us in terms of what, they want, what mood they want the ceremony to have, what elements they want the ceremony to have. We put those together. And then we go away and there's a number of things can happen there. We might be the ones who are putting the music onto the music system at the crematorium. We might be ordering live webcasts, ordering photo slideshows and sending links to family members so that they can upload photographs. We might be... Um, asking families to send us Spotify playlists so that we can play music at graveyards. There's so many different things can be go going on there and we'll cover that on the training. But we will also be writing a first draft of a funeral ceremony in accordance with the family's wishes and using all the lovely rich information we've been given. Once we have that, we are going to send that in its entirety, not bits of it, not the eulogy, not we're going to send it in, in its entirety 
to the family so they can read through it and they can make any changes they want, but so that there are no surprises for them on the day. That's the way I teach it. That's the way I like to do it. And having done a thousand of these ceremonies, that's the way families like it. And so once we do that and the family will come back with some changes, we will then go back and forward until we get that ceremony absolutely right. And once we have it fully approved by a family, then that's what we are going to deliver on the day, whether it's the crematorium, a funeral director's parlour, the graveside, in a hotel, in a community centre, in a pub, in somebody's house, in somebody's back garden. It can be anywhere. And then on the day, we are going to turn up and we are going to deliver that funeral service and it might be a 20 minute funeral service it might be 30 minutes it might be 40 minutes depending on where you are delivering it the venue that the ceremony is going to be held in and we are going to make that ceremony appear absolutely flawless we are aiming to do it in such a way that the families and the friends of the deceased absolutely feel that that person's been in the room or the essence of that person has been in the room and that we have honoured their life in the best way possible. Now, that might seem an easy process. Some people might think, oh, I can do that and that's easy. It's not. It is very challenging and it can be challenging in a number of ways and in different ways to different people. Because, as we said, we have to go out and engage with funeral directors and that can be a challenge to some people. Going out there and sort of selling themselves and saying, this is who I am, this is what I'm bringing, here's an example of my work. Would you consider working with me? How would that happen? Having to say how much you're going to charge? And all that stuff that comes with being a newbie. Then there's the challenge of, if you get a service, having to work with families. Because that can be very challenging. You know, sometimes you'll go into a house and there will be two people sitting there very quietly and you'll be able to engage with them very easily and you're trying to build rapport. But sometimes you're going there'll be 25 people sitting in the room and they're all talking over each other and they're shouting and they're away looking out photos and because each of them will be at different places with their grief. And that's a different kettle of fish. Sometimes there can be fragmented families, so the dynamics between families can be very difficult and you have to be able to manage that. But not only manage that situation with lots of people all throwing information at you at the same time, you have to be able to filter through that information to get everything you need. To, you, you have to be confident enough and have interpersonal skills that are so good that you can delve a wee bit deeper into stories and into uh, answers from questions to see if there's any more information. But you have to do that in a very sensitive way so that you don't, you're not pushing people too far. You're not making them feel that you know, you're just throwing all these questions at them. You have to be really good at building rapport with people. So lots of families have never seen a celebrant-led ceremony. They don't know what to expect and they can feel quite anxious about who's this person that's going to come in. They don't know you from Adam. At the very best, they might have been given a business card with your picture on it. But they're thinking, who is it? Are they going to judge us? You know, you'll go into families where the, there are no carpets on the floor and they'll be apologising for their home. It's their home. That's their place. That's their sanctuary. And they're feeling embarrassed about somebody coming into it. Conversely, you might go into, you know, a, 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 a mansion that's got, lo you know, a very affluent area, affluent family. And that's, you, you have to be able to hold space for that family the way you would hold space for somebody that's not got any uh, carpets on their floor. And that is completely meeting them where they are taking your judgment, your assumptions and leaving them behind at the door and just going in and being able to sit with a family and being able to listen and when needed to be a wee bit more assertive and make sure everybody's voices are being heard in the right way because often there might be a dominant voice in the room and you have to be able to 
that, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. Could I just come to this side of the room? I'm, I want to make sure that I'm getting to hear everybody's voice. So that can be very challenging. Or if you go in and families are saying, you know, we've not sp spoken to my mum for 30 years, so we don't have any information to give you. And they might feel embarrassed by that. They might feel defensive of that. And you have to be able, again, just to hold space for what is. And to reassure them that it doesn't matter what it is that they are bringing, that you deal with it in the right way for them. And so family visits can be very challenging. Then you've got all the technical stuff. If you're asked to put music onto systems and crematoriums, if you're asked to play the music through a Bluetooth speaker in your iPhone, some people are really good at tech, some people not. So there's that challenge, ordering live webcasts, ordering photographic slideshows. Some people can, be, uh, can find that really, really daunting. And so that's something to consider if you're coming into this work. Then there's the writing of the ceremony, because while I can give you all the tools and techniques and pass my experience and my knowledge um, from my eight years of doing funeral, uh, funeral ceremonies, what I can't do is teach you to be a creative writer, certainly not in four days. So, and some people that comes much more naturally and other people really have to work at it. But of course, we want to be offering the best value to families and we want to be honouring people's lives in the best way we possibly can. So part of that is writing creatively, thinking creatively and writing creatively. How do we bring a story to life? How do we bring a character to life? Because a well-crafted funeral ceremony should really bring somebody back to life for a few minutes, back to life and into the room so that everybody can say thank you for being in my life and then say their goodbyes. So that can be a big challenge and if that's something that you think uh, you might struggle with, that's a consideration. And then there's the delivery on the day. Because I get lots of people coming onto the train and saying, I'm, I have no problem with public speaking, I do it all the time. But usually they're talking about in a business setting or a workplace setting where they're standing up and there's 12 people around an oval table and they've got a bit of paper and some PowerPoint slides and they are imparting some information to those 12 people. That's not what being a funeral ceremonialist is. Being a funeral ceremonialist is about holding space for people. It's about being able to hold a whole room, space for a whole room of people and engaging them in a way that's very heartfelt and very authentic. So those are just some of the considerations if you're thinking of becoming a funeral celebrant. Not to put you off in any way, shape or form, but just to make sure you know what you're getting into. If you still think you'd like to be a celebrant, our next training is coming up in April. We only have one place left. So get in touch and um, let's have a chat to see if this is the right uh, path for you to be travelling. So send me an email to hello at celebranttrainingscotland.co.uk and I'll get back to you quicker than a Scotsman chasing a fiver down the street. Fair for.